this morning. I'm going to give you, for starters, what I would call and have heard as a phrase and have seen it on commercials with, uh, oh, I can't even think of the commercial, I can just see the gentleman with the gray and black beard and uh, he's Captain Obvious. I am going to give you the Captain, Captain Obvious statement. And just so you can come on board with what I'm talking about, I'm about to give you a statement and you go, oh yeah, right, that's obvious, that's a truth, an obvious truth, I understand that. Captain Obvious, are you ready? From the beginning of time, there has always been a future. Let me say that one more time. From the beginning of time, there has always been a future. And Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> okay, that's exactly how that goes. Thank you, Captain Obvious. So let me help you with that thought process. I'm going to give it a mathematical little kind of thought process. Don't freak out. You have point A, the beginning of time. Point B is over there. You get to point B in the future. Guess what? There is going to even be another point for another future. And so you're going to walk forward to that future. C, D, E, F. Or um, if you want to go in mathematical terms of numbers, because uh, Sophie, they're downstairs uh, uh, learning how Jesus was tempted and how you can be uh, safe, especially by uh, holding God's word close to your heart. That's how you can escape temptation and stuff like that. They're down there. But Sophia asked me this this week. Papa, what is the last number? And so I go, well, it's infinity. She goes, well, how do you write that? <laughs> okay? And so I, the only way I could explain it to someone who is seven was like this. Well, if you start off with a, I go, here, get a blank piece of paper, because you'll need a blank one. And if you start off with a one, and you keep adding zeros, line after line, and you get down to here, I went like this. I can't tell you what that number is, but I know this, there's another zero after that. And you need another sheet of paper. And so she wrote about four lines of zeros. And she goes, I'm done. I go, that's OK, because I still couldn't tell you what that one is. I go, I could probably go to, and she, she's quizzing me on, on, on this, this, this magical infinity future number. And so I go, well, um, there's. Uh, uh, you know what, these kids, they listen to the news or they hear the news or something like that. She goes, what's a trillion? And in my head, I'm like, oh, that's the deficit in the trillions. And so here she is, seven years old. Well, what's after that? And I'm like, ah, oh. well, let me help you here. There's thousands, there's hundred thousands, there's, there's, there's uh, millions, then there's billions and trillions, and then, and then quadrillions? I go, I don't know. I don't know what those future numbers are. And then, and then I'm going to move on. And this is, ready for a cap, another Captain Obvious moment there, Mr. Boomer back there? She goes like this, oh, it's infinity plus one. <laughs> and that is the ultimate. If you're ever in an argument with someone about, well, infinity and this, well, it's that plus one, you'll never beat it. Captain Obvious. There is, from the beginning of time, there has always been a future. I look at it this way. In the Garden of Eden, there was the beautiful beginning of time where we have, where words are passed down to us that it, for me and God created mankind in his own image. And, and you talk about what a perfect beginning that we can comprehend as people. That you know what? From the beginning of time, God had loved mankind so much that he created them in his own image. And yes, when you go into the story uh, of Genesis uh, and in those stories that are presented there, Yes, it is so quickly easy to recognize mankind created in God's image that had such a glorious future messed up. 
the beauty of what has passed down to us at the beginning of time has been this though even though we were created in his image and messed up God still came through with I have a savior that it will be coming your way and there's scholars and, and, and theologians and pastors that 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 grab verses, and, and I would be one of them that would love to grab on some of these verses and go, you know what? Yes, if you look deep enough in the story that is told, where, where, where the serpent in, in the Garden of Eden, and God comes in, and there's this conversation of, you know what? Here's how it's going to be for you. You will be, what? Trampled under the foot of mankind. And there's going to be a, one that will come that you will not. You will, you will try to grab onto the heel of that individual. And so some people go, that's where Jesus is, and that is where his, his doom is. That is where his death will come in. The devil will come in and have victory. But I'm going to tell you this. There's the, this is the problem with the future looks bright. There are people in this world they do not have that outlook. They, they don't have that. Um, and please don't get me wrong. Oh, you know, the grass is always greener. Or, oh, um, you're always so happy about the future. And bad things come. And, and so I can't have that. Well, I'm going to tell you this. There are two kinds of people in this world. There is a future that is bright and a future that is very dark. But for me, from the beginning of time, the future looks bright. You know what? The devil might think that he can come in and on that day where Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, where he would have celebrated or, this, or, or all of his, all that is uh, within his demonic domain would have celebrated that we now have victory. We have complete dominion over everything. And they would have celebrated, but they did not have the inclination of the future looks bright. Think about it. Even, even, even on, on that, 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 that time frame where death came and the disciples, you know what? I, I'm going to be realistic. For me, that, I probably would have been right along with them. This is it. It's all those years, the, the, the time that we had with the Savior, the things that we learned, the things that we saw. It must have been, if I could go into our time of language, a fad. After all, those kind of people came and went all the time. Yet, the future looks bright. Because three days later, <laughs> the stone is rolled away. Three days later, some ladies who, who in their walk probably didn't have a huge outlook on the brightness of the future meets and greets individ, uh, 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 an understanding that my Savior, He is risen. Go tell those other guys He's alive. Those other guys who, who for a moment probably don't have that bright future outlook, they're going to now have an understanding. And can you see this is how I grasp it. What? Peter and John race to the open tomb and look in. And, and I, I have to take it this way. On this side of the tomb, the future doesn't look very bright. There's just like a little, a little glimmering of something. There, there, it, it could be some kind of a story that, okay, we might have something. Let's check it out. But on the inside of the tomb, the future looks bright. Actually, man, because, see, this is, the, this is why I have such a bright outlook on my future. Because it wasn't just in the tomb. It was outside of the tomb where there was conversation. It was outside of the tomb when, when he meets the, the disciples. It's outside of the tomb when he is physically seen by 500 people is recorded for us. It is a bright future as he's going up into heaven and he says, I'm going to give you the comforter, the counselor, the guide, the one that's going to be always present. I will never ever leave you or forsake you. I will always be with you to the end of the earth. All that will make sense. Yes, my future looks bright. From the beginning of time. I loved our Old Testament reading. Actually, I loved all our readings. And I did love all our songs. 
because Pastor, uh, Pastor Mark, as we were singing this morning and, and preparing to sing this morning, in my head, it's like, it was like I said, there are some where their future looks so dark. And there are some where their future looks so bright because they are singing songs like, there is joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. I'm telling you, they can't grasp that. There is joy with the Master in the service with the Master. They cannot grasp that. Nor can they grasp even our simplest of, of, of verse of the uh, prayer song walking with thee. I, I, you know, for me, let's go back. They walked with him in the garden. And today I have a grasp of what it means to walk with the Savior. My future looks bright. I loved our Old Testament reading because I highlighted it. And if you have any highlighting th thought process, I did like verse 18. Verse 18, actually 17 and 18. Don't envy sinners but always continue to fear the Lord. So don't look over there and go, you know what? Those, the sinners, the ones who are living the, the, just this destitute, this selfish, this worldly life, this all about me and not about you thought process, because I don't care how you look at it, deep down, that's what it is. Don't envy, envy the sinners. In fact, you will be, be rewarded for not envying them. Your hope will not be disappointed. You, you want to know why my future looks bright? Because my hope is never disappointed. I might hit a stumbling block. I might hit a hard day. I might hit this. But I'll tell you what, when you put it in the context of the future, my hope will not be disappointed. My future looks bright. Before we... Uh, Get ready to have a time of communion. I'd like for you to just bear with me for a few scriptures. Old Testament, Zephaniah chapter 3. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. He's in your midst. And, and I understand where in the Old Testament, people need to be reminded over and over, God is still there. He is in your midst. And he cares and loves you so much that he will save you. See, unless you have had a gun pointed at your head, we struggle with the thought process, what do I need to have that, that, that needs to be saved? If I'm doing so well with this or so well with that, what do I need to be saved? We're back in, the, in the, the context of some of these older scriptures. They were about to go into battle and they're about to have a large army come up and a large army to either destroy them or take them captive. And they needed someone who was mighty, that was over everything to save them. And so when I read this old, these old texts and Old Testament scripture, I bring it to my attention that, you know what? There are times in my life that are so difficult. There are times in my life where there, the things are up against me that might take me captive, that might even try to scam me out of money. And there is one who will save. He's in my midst. New Testament, New Testament, Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. May the God of hope, may the God of the bright future, may the God who is ever ahead of me May he be the one that fills. See, you got to take it personally. You got to take it where I want to be filled with all joy and peace in believing. So I have this within me, and that's how I understand my future looks bright. Because I'm going to tell you what, it's hard to have a bright future in your thought process if there's no joy in your heart. 
if there's no if there's no believing in the one who saves or no believing in the one who has a hope and future for you or not believing that there's one who can bring peace see it's not just about oh yay joy it's about joy peace and, and and the list goes on when you have this future with the savior and it comes from god and by the power of the holy spirit I will abound in hope. See, that's, you, you know, people, people wonder, how do, you, how do you keep a disposition that you have? You know, and that's easy, because when they don't see you on your downest moments, they think you're always up. Well, you're, you know, no one is always up. But I do know this, that my hope will abound. My hope will, on my darkest days, my hope abound. Why is that? Because I quickly grasp onto the sight of the Savior and God at work. See, a lot of times we let things come our way and, and interrupt our lives, and all of a sudden we can no longer see what lies ahead with the hope that we have in the Savior. First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. He caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. So yeah, you want to know where my, where my future that is so bright? I don't care what happens here on earth. You know what? I, I, actually, I do. I care what happens here on earth because I want others to walk a path, to walk a life that leads directly from point A to point eternity plus one. That's, that's what I have for me. See, a bright future is not just to be selfish, not to just be for me. I want everyone to have that bright future and it only comes from the resurrection of a living Savior from the dead. And not only does, because he lives, but they, his blood shed for me gives me this forgiveness. And I'm going to tell you what, forgiveness is the greatest brightness of my future. Because you know what? People are going to come up, oh, I remember when you did this just yesterday. And I'm going to say, guess what? You're so slow. I already got that forgiven. <laughs> You are so behind times. I'm already into the future. And my God forgives me. And now I'm going to be blunt too. Because a lot of times people think they, we can walk through life. Oh, I did bad. Forgive me. Oh, I did bad. Forgive me. But I'm going to tell you what. When we talk about this bright future, it also connects to those that you do wrong. So therefore, my forgiveness might have to be coming up to someone and going, man, I really did you bad, and I am so, so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. See, we, see, and, and I'm going to tell you this. Not only does it bring this release within you, even if they do not forgive you, it still brings this release in you that God has walked that path of forgiveness. And with that forgiveness, you have a bright future. Our Philippians chapter 3. Our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. I'm going to tell you what. It, it, and I, I, I want to go deeper with that for just a second. Because when you can grasp your citizenship is in, citizenship is in heaven, then you will grasp that the Father who's in, I am in the midst of him, I am in that citizenship right now. That heavenly domain was at, at least right here. You can never take that away. That is my bright future. That is my hope that I have. And with that, I am a child of the king. See, that, see citizenship, that just sounds like I'm a part of the United States of America you know, or I'm a part of this country over here, or I'm a part of that country over here. I'm going to tell you, when I have citizenship in heaven, I am a child of the king. 
ready? Plus one, beat that. Because you can have some king over here or some king over there, and they will never compare to the Father in heaven and all that he can do. At some time in their reign, they will have a stopping point. And God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit never ends. And I'm a citizen of that. See, I understand what my bright future and hope is lying. Before we get ready into our communion time, a song that that, ha, that uh, triggers within my mind when I talk when I when I think about that future that looks bright. Great is Thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow or turning with Thee. And highlighter, highlighter, highlighter. Thou changes not. See, that's how I understand. That future. You know what? God, he changes not. His compassions do not fail. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, uh, I'm just going to do it in my context of, uh, of language. God's compassion does not fail. It won't fail today. It won't fail tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Thou hast been, and thou forever will be. Pardon for sin. See, well, if you remember that joy, peace scripture I read, here's a, here's a song that says, pardon for sin, Jesus, please forgive me, and a peace that endureth, a peace that endureth, a peace, ready, that goes on and on and on, not only does it go on and on, but everything that comes up against you with your forgiveness, that peace will endure. I will endure that, and I will endure that, and I will endure that. Why? Because I have a bright future in my Savior, and it's that peace that I'm talking about. Thine own dear presence. <laughs> he is in the midst. I am in the midst of the Savior and in his presence in his presence let's just do two things it is to cheer me so now you understand this okay well, maybe a little <laughs> you understand the joy that is within me because he is his presence is there to cheer me and it is to guide me it is to guide me why because I also know this that my future can be messed up why, instead of going dot, 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 dot with the Savior and deciding that the world and selfishness and just my own disposition and no, you know, it, it, the sadness where some people even believe there is no God and when you die, it is just the end. Yay! <laughs> so, I don't mean yay. I, I'm cur I had to curb my sarcasm because who finds joy in nothingness that takes place in your life when you have this over here? And so he guides my way and he gives me strength for today. And then here it is. And a bright hope for tomorrow. It's just in the lyrics. Just take it in as it is. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning. So it keeps on going. New mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So I'm going to ask you this, just this very quickly. See, it's sometimes, can I say this? It is easy to, to go through God's word and, and study and, wow, yeah, that's a great scripture. Oh, that's great scripture. Oh, pastor, you had some good ones this morning. We sang some great worship this morning about the joy in the Lord. And here we are at the time we're about to take communion. And so I ask this, where is your future? Where is your future? I want your future to be bright. And when I say bright, I mean this. I want your future to be with the Lord for all eternity all eternity, all eternity. Not only that, but I want your future, as in, are you ready? 
When you walk out those double doors, guess what? Your future has just begun. Okay? When you walk out of this pew and walk toward the back, your future has... Actually, as I'm breathing and you're breathing right here, your future has begun. Where is your future? If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in such a way that He brings joy, that He brings peace, I would ask you this. God, help me. I follow you. I read your, your, your writings. I try to memorize and keep them in my heart. But God, that peace and joy that comes when things are up against me, I'm struggling with that. God, help me to have that peace and joy and cheerfulness and guiding and strength that you offer that can only come from you because I know it is in connection with my future. Where is your future? And then one last thing. Where is your future? And, I, and you know, we're about to go into a business meeting on Wednesday. Um, the one Wednesday in a year where we talk business, we talk vision, and we talk uh, purpose of the church, we talk finances that it takes to do the things that the church needs to do. All that in one Wednesday night. But I want to say this. In that one Wednesday night, it ha we should walk into, may I ask this one is sp specifically, walk in where the future looks bright on that Wednesday. Walk in with that, that disposition of, or let's even get better, let's go Captain Obvious. You know what? God has a divine purpose and a place for this church and for the people that are here. And not only for them, but so that others that they come in contact in this place will have a bright future in the Savior. Where is your future? And does it ref how does it reflect upon you? Pastor Mark, let's come forward, please. Amen. See, that's what we, see, when you have a, it is a joy of understanding, of knowing what is next. See, some people, I have no idea what's next. You know what? I might not know everything, but I do know the most important thing, and that is he guides my steps, and even if it was to be disastrous for me on the outside of those doors, it is not disastrous. Okay? I'm a citizen of heaven. Before we sing these, these couple of verses here for this, for this song, we're about to take communion. <laughs> oh, man. Communion. Communion where it's a remembrance of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and, and, and how Jesus, with his disciples, broke bread and just emphasized to them there is a bright future for, to, for in moments, my body will be broken for you. And, and that is a hard future to grasp, guys. But you, I want you to know this. It is for you. And then my blood is shed for you. For your future. In fact, there's an area of a text, I believe it's in Luke, that talks about that blood is spilled for many. Oh, my, my, my. So as we get ready to stand and sing these verses before doing a couple, uh, doing our communion. It is so important to know that as you take communion, as we're singing, you don't even have to, uh, don't even sing if you don't have, if you, if you need to pray, because your heart must be right. God, make me pure. Make me holy in your presence. I, I understand the thought process of the bright future and your forgiveness, but God, let me have that in these moments. If there is something in your heart this morning that kind of is blocking you, is making you missing the mark of, of the holiness of God and struggling with that future, God, as we sing, pray, God, help me. Forgive me for those, uh, the sins that I have done, the things that I've done wrong. Forgive me, God, because if we are about to take uh, place, um, take part, take in the taking of bread and the juice of remembering your, your body broken for us and the blood shed for us in this moment. I want to stand holy before you because I want my future to be bright as I take these steps out. And then we're going to read verses. And one of the things is in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, is the story is, is being, is, is being uh, re reiterated to those about to take communion. 
It is to be done until the Savior comes to take us home. Okay? Future, 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 future. And I'm going to tell you what. It does not stop on the death on the cross, but it continues with the resurrection of the Savior that brings salvation to others. And so we remember it. We remember his death along with the resurrection for the future of others. Let us stand. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to sing a couple verses. God, thank you for the future that you have for us from the beginning of time. God, I thank you that, that knowledge has been brought our way into knowing your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. For asking of the forgiveness of our sins and so that we can be um, in this uh, divine midst of and the words that were spoken in Scripture, God, not just etched on our heart, but becomes a part of us in our walk with you. God, help, help us with our future. Help us with, as we reach out to others that they might come to know you. As we are about to partake in the, the, the breaking of bread and, and, and uh, the, the juice representing your blood, God, we thank you that we remember it often and that it's not just a, a, a habit, but it is a joy that reminds us of what lies ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.